Okay, so now we will start out by making the line move plate. And this will take in an x increment, so basically the x direction that we want to move in, and the y increment, which is the y direction we want to move in. And we can access the game controller, first of all, because we are dealing with the matrix here, and the controller has the board matrix that we will need to access. So we can call git component of game. And we want to have a local x variable I'll just scroll down and we want to set the x equal to the x board plus the x increment. And then the same thing for the y. Plus y increment. Okay. Now we need to have a while loop here and make sure that our position is still on the board because we're going to keep on recursing over this over and over again and we also want to get the position and make sure that's equal to null to make sure there's no other pieces there and if that's true then we want to create a move plate so we can make a function called move plate spawn and then we can increase the x increment because we'll keep on doing this over and over again until, well, we run out of space on the board. And then we want to increase the y as well. All right. Next, what we want to do is we want to do the same thing except see if we can place an attack move plate. Because remember, we have a normal move plate where you can move, and then the attack move plate is if you can attack that piece of the board. Namely, if there's actually a chess piece of the enemies on there. And we can, again, get the position, x, y. And then what we need to do is we need to get the chessman script of that position to see if their player is on e not equal to our player. So if it's not equal, then you can actually attack it. So we can make a move plate attack spawn function there. All right, perfect. So that's all for that function, where we have to go right on to the next one, though, which is the L move plate for the knight. And for this, we're going to call another function, because having layers of function increases code readability and just makes it quicker to code all of this up and also if you need to make any changes it's easy to make so we just do point move plate x board plus one and y board plus two because the l shape has uh, plus ones and plus twos so we're going to need one two three four five six seven eight we'll need eight of these and then we can do the minus one and then we need a plus two for both of these. And then it's a one, and it's a one, but it's a minus one here. Okay, and then plus one, and then minus one here, and minus two, and minus two, minus, minus two, two, plus one, and then minus one. So all of these right here should be correct. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, just copy this down for yourself. And then next we have the surround move plate. So this is what the king uses. And yeah, for this one, it's the same thing as before. We need all those point move plates. And what we actually need is the X board and then the Y board plus one and then the Y board minus one for above and below the king and after that what we want to do is we need to have a bunch or we need to have three different ones for one less on the X board position so we can do minus one then we can do zero 
and then we can do plus one. Okay, now we're going to need to do the same for the other side. So this will be plus one, plus one, and plus one. All right, perfect. We're almost done. Well, actually, we still got a lot to go. That's a lie. Sorry. So next we have point move plate, and we have int x, and we have int y again. So for the point move plate, this is where we will actually access the controller again to get the component of game from the controller. And we want to see if the position is on the board again. So we just do x, y from there. And then what we need to do is we need to get the actual chess piece that's currently there and see if it exists. So we need to see if there's actually a chess piece on this uh, position. And if not, then we can just create the x and y for that. Otherwise, if there is another piece and it's not uh, the same player as us, then again, we can create the attack spawn. So this is kind of the same code as we saw before for the other function, but the difference is we're just not really using a while loop here. We're using just normal if and else if sort of situation. Next, we need to create the pawn move plate function that we created before. So pawn move plate, and that's int x and into y and again we need to get this so I'll just copy that over so we want the controller get component and again we want to see if this is on the board and yeah so I don't know the codes just a little bit different here so we'll see if the get position of X and Y is equal to no then we set the x and y of the move plate spawn to there so again this is kind of the same code as before it's just we're not making a game object of it i mean either way it really works so after this we have a very long line of code here where we need to see if the position is on the board of one increased in the x and nothing increased in the y. And we also need to see if we can get the position of x plus 1 and y and see that that does not equal no. And also get position x plus 1, y. And yeah, we need to get the component of this. We need to get the chessman script and see that it's not equal to ourselves. And if all of this is true, then we can do the move plate attack spawn. So let me just show as much as this is possible. So I will move this over to multiple lines so it's easier to see here. So we want to see if the x plus 1 is possible. And we want to see that this does not equal no. So then we can actually move the attack spawn. Because remember, the uh, pawn actually has very different movement compared to other pieces that we're used to here. And yeah, we're going to need to copy the same code over and paste it because um, a pawn can actually attack on the left side or the right side of itself. So we need to just switch all of these to minus ones, every single one of these, including this one. And perfect. That should be all set for the pawn move plate. 
And next, we actually need to spawn in the move plate. So what we need to do here is move plate spawn and bring in a matrix X and a matrix Y position. And we can create some local variables here. And just the basic X and Y again. And then after that, we need to adjust these by the same sort of offsets that, if you remember, we were using before. Okay, so then set that to 0.66F. And then X has to be added to that constant. And same with Y. Okay. And next, what we need to do is set up the map or set up the oh what is it called just the reference to the move plate not a map sorry so we need to instantiate the move plate set a new vector 3 of x y and negative 3 so it's above the board and then just have the quant Quaternion identity. Okay. So we need to be able to also access the move plate script. So we can get the component uh, move plate here. Yeah. And then we need to access that script and set the reference to ourself, which is game object. That's how you access yourself with a lowercase g. And then we also need to do the same thing to set the chords. And we need to set it to the matrix X and the matrix Y. All right. Because these chords are actually for the position on the matrix or the 2D array. And then over here, this is the Unity world space. So these are different things, remember. This one is actually for displaying it on the screen in Unity. And this one is actually for us to be able to keep track of everything inside the code here inside the game script. So it'll actually get set up kind of like on this uh, 2D array here, whereas this actually gets set up on the screen. So with that out of the way, we just have one more script or one more function, sorry, to make, which is the same thing as, as this, except it's for the attack one. So we create attack spawn and we do everything exactly the same, except right at the end here, we set the attack equal to true. So that's just one little difference we have to account for. And actually, when you're looking at this code, we're just copying over the same code. So if you want to actually clean up this code a little bit more, what you could do is you could just have the move plate spawn. And you could have a third variable here to say um, bool is attack. And then by default, it can be false. So that would actually clean up a lot of the code because right here, you could just have an if statement that says, well, if this is if is attack, then set attack to true. And all you would have to change is in each of your functions, uh, adding that third variable or that third parameter there. So let's actually save this and let's go back. And we have a few little pieces of housekeeping that we need to do, first of all. So what we need to do is we need to go into our move plate and we need to create a tag for it. We need to give it the, uh, excuse me, the move plate tag. And yeah, so we need to also go back and add the script to it. So I'll just go over to the scripts and I'll add the move plate script to the move plate asset and then I will add a component of a collider. So we need a box collider 2D here. 
so that our on mouse up function can actually work. So if I can scroll back up to it, colliders need to have the on mouse or the on mouse up actually needs to have a collider for it to work correctly. And there's just one more thing that we need to do, and that is adding a collider also to the chess piece here because it also has an on mouse up function inside of it as well. So now if we go back and press play, we can see if it works. So I'm clicking on it. The variable move plate of chessmen has not been assigned. In order to fix that error, all we have to do is go inside of our chess piece uh, prefab asset and then actually <clears throat> move this move plate over to there. So the chess piece now has a reference. Okay, and another quick thing we have to do is we have to click on our move plate and make sure it has the correct move plate tag attached to it. And there is one more very important thing that we also forgot to do, which is inside our chessmen script, when we're setting to be the correct sprite and everything like that, we also need to be setting the player. So what this means is we need to set ourselves as the black player or the white player for each match. And so yeah, we can just copy this code in here real nice like that. And then we can just simply do it like this. Okay, perfect. And with all of that, let's see if all of the code works correctly now. Okay, everything seems to be working pretty smoothly now. So thank you for checking out this tutorial series and I'll upload another episode soon.